I have been seeing so many people lately who aren't the biggest Kirby fans go like, oh wow Nintendo, you have so many franchises under your belt. Do you really need to give Kirby this many games in this short amount of time? That's insane. You're not gonna hear me complain and I'll tell you that much. Dude, it's crazy. I know it's Kirby's 30th anniversary, but my man, Forgotten Land isn't even in the rearview mirror yet. Not even four months after that game released. Bam. A new game. Randomly announced with a trailer drop one random morning. O okay. Nothing. Quite like a summer game announcement with a summer release drop with no specific date to really rile up the anti-Kirby community, as you've seen on social media. People, relax. He's just a little guy. It's not his fault you haven't gotten a new F-Zero yet. Me, on the other hand, yeah, I was I was in a good mood, to, to, to say the least. Eh, I, I don't know about Dream Buffet, man. That game seems to be pretty one-note. I don't really think Antu can get a full video out of that one. It, I don't think it's possible. You fool. You absolute Nimrod. Listen, okay, you may not have realized this until now, but there is a lot of good to be pulled out of this game simply releasing. For starters, it is the first brand new spin-off to release after the beginning of this current phase of Kirby that started with Forgotten Land earlier this year. This whole talk of phases for the franchise is really just all talk for the more dedicated fans to dive deeper into, I get that. But consider this then. This is the first original spin-off to release since Battle Royale, a game that I'm still convinced barely anybody played. Oh, you may be saying now, aren't you forgetting about Super Kirby Clash and Kirby Fighters 2? No, stop asking me questions. Those are clearly sequels to spin-offs that already existed on the 3DS. Dream Buffet is the first time in five years a completely unique spin-off was unleashed onto the masses. It is the fifth Kirby game to release on the Switch thus far, making that console only behind the 3DS now in terms of pure quantity of unique Kirby content. And to put that in the same year as the first true 3D platformer with Forgotten Land, new footage from the cancelled GameCube game deciding to surface out of nowhere, and we got a sweet orchestrated performance from Japan too? Dude, that's awesome! Weirdly though, that whole orchestra thing, the videos are only going to be available uh, until August 31st. Uh, so that's that's kind of stupid, um, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, Nintendo's not always great. Dude, even the anime is getting a Blu-ray re-release. It's only in Japan, as far as I know, but still, that's something. Kirby fans are definitely eating really good this year, which clearly was the premise for this new game. Okay, so there is a story that does tie everything together, but it's a lot to take in, so pay attention. As he's about to eat his millionth strawberry shortcake, the Dream Fork suddenly shrinks Kirby down to a tiny size. So now Kirby and all of the other Kirbys decide to compete to see who can eat the most. That's it. Did you get all that? Look at that face. This is what true happiness looks like. This is why I love Kirby so much as a character, man. No fear, no anger, no negative reactions to becoming small. Now he, now he just realizes he can have more cake to eat. I love him. I cannot wait for the Dream Fork to show up as an ability skin in the next mainline game. This is integral to the franchise now. And actually, the more I thought about it, it's kind of surprising we haven't had a Kirby game solely based around food until now. Over in Japan, Kirby has been popping up all of these different cafes all over the place for years. And it's some of the most adorable edibles I've ever seen in my life. Dude, did you also know that like the Kirby Cafe plays musical remixes made specifically for it? And then they released a soundtrack for the cafe? I, I love this franchise so much. All right, now let, let's just... Let, let's just get this next part out of the way. Uh, uh, wow, Dream Buffet. Isn't that just the Kirby version of Fall Guys? There you go. I said it. What an original comment. Thank you for your original comment. So yeah, there is an element of Fall Guys that certainly had some influence with Dream Buffet's existence, but I really think this game does a lot to stand out on its own, while still exemplifying some of the qualities that make Fall Guys so much fun. The chaos. M mostly the chaos part of things. It's a very chaotic game. First and foremost, it is important to call out the fact that Kirby rolls on a ball in this game, despite having his hands and feet right there, readily available. You see, this is actually a clever callback to what I like to call the uh, Lazy Kirby series, following the likes of Rainbow Curse and Tilt and Tumble, where Kirby just decides to roll on a ball instead of walking, as opposed to a game like Canvas Curse, where his appendages were forcibly removed. 
pay attention, this will be on the test. In this case in particular, it's actually the most relatable Kirby's ever been. The whole point of this game is to eat as much food as possible and out-eat your opponents. And listen, sometimes you end up eating so much that rolling around is the most logical solution. This checks out. But, okay, what we have here with Dream Buffet is a purely multiplayer experience where you, three other Kirby's either as real players or CPU, along with a few other computer-controlled Waddle Dees for the races, embark on a competition to eat more strawberries than the rest. And the structure for each game is the same every single time. You start with the race, you take a bit of a breather with a short minigame, do another race, and then end things off in a fight to the death battle royale. Glad to see them using those words again in a Kirby game also. Didn't think the words Battle Royale would show up for Kirby ever again. I believe the initial worry with this format was just, well, how much replayability is there with something like this? Are there any different gameplay modes? How many levels are there? Etc, etc. Perhaps this is something that you can only have fun with for a single round or two and then it wears thin. Buying a game simply because Fat Kirby is in it is only funny for five minutes. I need more, damn it. Well, perhaps I have a bit of a bias here, but honestly, this game is a blast. Dare I say, a chef's kiss. Kirby fanboy loves the new Kirby game. What a, what a shocking and unexpected headline. For one, it helps that the core gameplay is really solid. At first, things were a bit jarring. The controls are super loose. Like, I get it, Kirby rolls around all the time, he is ball, he rolls on cake, it's fine, I get why it's loose, but he definitely wasn't as responsive as I thought he was going to be. The more I played though, and the more I got used to things, I realized that it doesn't matter. Outside of the general structure being identical every round, there is just the right amount of uncertainty and chaos to make things interesting from game to game. Like, you never know what stages a round is going to throw at you, and you keep unlocking new ones the more you level up, with chances being pretty high that the one that you just unlocked is going to be in the following game to encourage that just one more game mindset. Obviously, it's not as varied as Fall Guys, and there's likely not going to be any updates for a cursed tall Kirby costume in this game, but that's fine. Dream Buffet is doing its own thing, and it's doing it incredibly well. Plus, there are so many unlockables, like, Jesus, they are really hoping that you put a lot of hours into this game. And while the objective never changes, there is never a set strategy to guarantee victory. The races have a handful of these cookie walls that stop you, giving the players further behind a chance to catch up. Or maybe you get the brand new ability, Jelly, that allows you to slip right under the gates and get a good lead. Do you want to take the risky optional path that could lead to a cannon that shoots you way ahead? Well, the only problem is if you screw up, Damn, that's a, that's a big time loss. And also, be sure to grab one of the item boxes whenever you pass them. It could be a few extra strawberries, which, whatever, but it could be an ability, like a wheel, that lets you shove your opponents to the side. And if times are particularly rough, you may even get access to the high jump ability to really pick up the slack. Mario Kart Bullet Bill style. Then there's the Battle Royale, the main course. It is absolute chaos and insanity where all four of you are just bumping into each other with reckless abandon out for blood, which conveniently uh, is the same color as strawberries, so I get it. It's like just a more crazy version of bumper balls from Mario Party. I am a big fan of this. Just keep picking up fruit, get abilities. If you get something like the stone or needle, try to utilize it well so you can knock out an opponent and steal a bunch of their berries. And dude, even when you're done, there's a Mario Party bonus star element too. At the end of every game, you get bonus strawberries for things like picking up other fruit that sporadically have been showing up, spending the most time hovering, trying to get back onto the stage. Maybe you defeated more enemies than the rest. You never know what the rewards are going to be until things are all said and done. And I like that level of uncertainty. I guess it like, it, it doesn't encourage you to actually be good at the game and just go with the flow, but that's that's not a that's not a bad thing. I know I'm just throwing a bunch of information at you, but there is just a lot of little things in Dream Buffet that I really didn't expect. This is really high quality stuff. They took a game that could have potentially been a soulless romp that you get the most out of after two games and made it something that rivals the level of madness that made City Trial so good. City Trial is still better, I'm not that crazy, but still, very very fun. I even got to praise the HD rumble here, and I, I know it seems like I'm stretching here because it's a Kirby game, of course I'm going to talk about every little thing, but quite frankly, the fact that I even noticed the HD rumble is a miracle to me. Not enough games on the Switch have been taking advantage of this. One of the main criticisms I saw with this game was, well, the final round, the main course, is so chaotic, it's like the previous rounds don't even matter. N no? Did you just get fourth place and then got really mad? 
It is true that it is very possible to jump from first to last or vice versa, all depending on how the battle royale goes. I've had rounds where I just get slaughtered, and then I've had rounds where I go on a killing spree. But even then, I still don't get first due to the bonus strawberries. But by the logic that's trying to be used against this game, couldn't you also argue that nothing about a Mario Kart race matters until the final lap due to all of the items that you may or may not get? Just, just have fun, man. It's not, it's not that deep. You're not gonna start a competitive Dream Buffet League anytime soon, it is not that serious. It's not even like you get anything extra for getting first place anyway, aside from adding to your overall win count, and then you get a strawberry count with a multiplier for the level up system, no matter what place you get. That part is consistent. That being said, if any of you out there are planning on settling schoolyard debates over a game of Dream Buffet, I, I wanna hear about it, cause that, that sounds dope. And man, the fan service in this game, oh man. The team over at HAL is starting to really pull in some deep cuts from the series history, and the fanboy in me is in absolute heaven. As you level up, not only do you unlock stages, which already have their fair share of cool designs like an Elphalin Battleground, but also a ton of colors and hats, sort of a callback to the paint can idea from Amazing Mirror and Squeak Squad, probably not intentional, because uh, there's already a ton of Kirby colors, but that's all I think about and that's kinda cool. And while the colors alone are one thing, being able to accessorize to look like Rick the Hamster, put on Marx's headdress, get Ribbon to hold on to you as you play, it's so neat and adorable, I love this a whole lot. Something about a really fat Meta Knight just fills me with life, man. Th the same way he just filled up on all this cake. You also unlock a bunch of character treats where Hal learned how to throw some PNGs into Photoshop and add a texture on them to place them onto cookies. That then can be used as your starting podium for the races. Just an extra little twist of personality, I like that. You can even decorate the cake on the main menu with them too. Why not? That's the most pointless part about the game, but hey, you can do it. I just really like seeing official callbacks to the likes of Grill from the unlocalized Superstar Stacker for the Super Famicom, or the even more recent 30th Anniversary Music Festival. There's art for that festival that's in this game. That's, that's just neat. And then the music that you unlock, man. Some of the tracks that they decided to remix are wild and totally uncalled for in the best possible way. The Wispy Wood stage from Pinball Land? Got a remix. The Water Levels from Tilt and Tumble? Got a remix. The Mall from Forgotten Land is here. Grill's theme from Superstar Stacker. DDD's theme from Dream Course. Dude, they remixed Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright stage, stage five, from Block Ball, and that song is such a gem from the Game Boy library, and it has never gotten acknowledged until this very game with a fantastic remix. I'm a Kirby fanboy, I, I, don't, I don't know if you can tell. And all of these remixes are on top of a lot of other songs that are just straight rips from games like Dreamland and Adventure, and it really makes just for a great soundtrack overall. It's a, it's a big shock for a Kirby game to have a good soundtrack, I know, but uh, that, that's where we are. And then it's also very clear that Hal was so focused on filling this game with a ton of small references and nods that I can't help but mention. You got Master Hand counting down the start of races the same way he did in the start of the Super Smash Bros. 64 opening. That's cool. Ability-wise, it's already neat to see Hal continue to make new abilities purely for spin-offs with Jelly, like how they just made Wrestler for Fighters 2. But aside from that, this is High Jump's first appearance since Return to Dreamland. This is Burning's first appearance since Canvas Curse, since that ability simply got absorbed into fire in more recent games. And also this next part, uh, this really can't go understated. This isn't simply Yellow Kirby. This is based off of Kibi, the player 2, from Dream Course, who was his own character. Yes, I am not making this little nugget up. They gave player 2 its own name back in Dream Course, and it has had zero mentions in this franchise until Dream Buffet. You want a deep cut? Th that's it right there. Hal Labs lately has gone above and beyond when it comes to fan service, and I am in heaven. I know a lot of people really don't care, but for me, this all makes this game go from good to great, and I am in love. It's the other Nintendo franchises that need to be better. All of this being said, though, I'm not so much of a fanboy that I can't also acknowledge that there are definitely some annoyances here. For one, we have typical Nintendo Online shenanigans, where I've only had like one really laggy game, but for the most part, it is common to expect the occasional hitch. Without really ruining things in my experience, it's just pretty noticeable. Clearly this is something where your mileage will vary, that's how it's always been with any online game for the Switch and every other Nintendo console that's had online. And then for the online options, I mean, it's, it's fairly solid. There are no issues jumping into a public lobby, and you even have the option for password lobbies to get friends involved, something that uh, other 
contemporary recent Nintendo multiplayer games are lacking, so uh, good, good for Kirby, I guess. Local play, though, I mean, not as cool. Only two players can play on a single console, which is strange because the whole point of the game is four players. And even when you get into a game, you would think that you would be able to choose what stages to play on, or at the very least, see what's available to you, because you keep unlocking stages, and that's great. But quite frankly, without looking things up online, I have no idea how many stages are available to pull from, because you just get thrown into a random one no matter what option you pick. And there is no menu that lets you know. You can choose which game you want to play. Do you want to do a race, a mini game, or a battle royale? That's cool. But even still, when you go into them, you just get thrown into a random stage. A little bit of choice would have been good for that. The same goes for the music. You just listen to whatever the game throws at you. There's like no jukebox to really go through everything. It's, it's weird. The lack of choice is just weird. I guess the reward list is supposed to be the next best thing because you can play the music and see everything on that menu, but... That, that's pretty cumbersome, realistically. That's why I go back to the whole ideology of your best bet with Dream Buffet is to really just play the game at the mercy of the game's wishes and just have fun. And a great time will be had if that's the case. The lack of choice is definitely one that I am not a fan of and the online issues could be prevalent, but as it stands, it's fine if you don't really think about it too much. Not forgiving Nintendo, because they, they should be better about all of this stuff, but in this particular case, it's, it's like, whatever. And also, just to be realistic here, I have to question the staying power of a game like this. The previous Kirby Switch entries, Super Clash and Fighters 2, were both really fun and pushed for quality multiplayer experiences, but not long after release, I don't think anybody cared. It was a struggle to find full lobbies for Fighters 2 weeks, if not days, after that game launched. Thankfully, Dream Buffet will fill a lobby with CPUs if it doesn't get a full group of four players in there, so that's nice, but yeah, this is just me being more hopeful than anything that people are actually playing this game long term. It's uh, probably not gonna happen, but it would be nice. If my opinion means anything in this grand Kirby world, this is my favorite digital offering on the Switch yet, and I am very hopeful for the future because the world needs more goofy multiplayer Kirby games. Now, for the love of God, would you make a new City Trial game already? What a turnaround for Kirby on this console, man. Star Allies was fairly mediocre. Super Clash was fun, but the free-to-play model was a turnoff for many people. Can't blame them. Fighters 2 was good, but the online multiplayer died immediately. And then we have Forgotten Land, which was a fantastic jump to 3D, and now the best spinoff on the console yet with Dream Buffet. That, thankfully, should still be really fun and approachable, even when the online community starts to dwindle, which will, I mean, unfortunately be a little sooner rather than later, I would assume. But considering just how many people on social media like to claim that Fall Guys is a dead game despite still being very successful, maybe this is truly the best move in the long run. And besides, what Kirby has that Fall Guys doesn't, you can make characters incredibly fat. I'm not saying that's what makes Dream Buffet better, but I'm not saying it doesn't help its case. Gotta enjoy this ride while it lasts, fellow Kirby fans out there. You gotta remember, this is for the 30th anniversary. That's inevitably going to end very soon, obviously. So, uh, that means next year, we're gonna have a bit of a break, right? That means that, you know, they'll step back and they'll be like, okay, maybe this year we don't make one or two Kirby games in the same year and shadow drop them on Twitter. That's, that's going to happen. It absolutely is not going to happen.